for me is exactly almost 4 a.m. in the morning, actually. So it's good morning for me. Uh, but I hope all of you are super excited to be here in this amazing space today. Um, and then basically to start, I think most of you actually already know me, but as you know, we are in the launch of the Global Body Model. And before we go specifically to this space, I just would like to introduce a bit of myself. So for who doesn't know me, I'm Julia Torres. I'm AIV POD for 2021. And I'm actually from Recife, Brazil. And it was actually part uh, of my whole life in Isaac that it was basically, I think I spent almost four years in Isaac in Brazil. And then basically, actually a fun fact is that in 2015, I went to the exchange uh, in Australia and I was also part of AP somehow for some months. I was a member, I also joined Isaac there. It was in Queensland uh, for around six months, I would say. And then after that, I actually went back to Brazil and then I, I applied to BB and then I was VP, USP and everything. And then after that, I actually went to Bahrain and then I was MC uh, and then MCP, I became MCP on the way in Bahrain as well. And then my last experience was actually in the Netherlands, that was last year, where I was uh, MCP, TM, and OD. And it's a fun fact is that basically I read past to all the regions. And for me, being part of actually of all the regions, it's making me realize that Isaac is actually very different, the way that we manage, the way that we run the organization. Because in the end, I, the culture, the customs, like the behaviors and everything actually shape a lot how we uh, actually manage the organization. And also the, another fun fact is that OD is also very different when you think about organization development in each one of like, uh, each one of part of the world, for example. And I also believe that a lot of the time that you talk about OD, uh, we also have very different audience, uh, mainly actually when you talk about OD model, because I think, I mean, when people talk about OD model, some people actually think that the model is everything that a person that is responsible for it does. <laughs> And actually, all the time that you talk about the model, we have normally two types of audience. That is the one that is like, oh my God, here we go again, like this uh, to never walk. Uh, I, I, I don't know what I'm here about this again, like I'm all the time, every time the model changes, every time like we are doing that. And it's probably like most of the MCPs, honestly speaking, I, I'm being there. And also we have the type of people that are actually super excited that, oh my God, I cannot believe the model is here. And Blah, blah, blah. And that is, I would not say all of them to the PSOT, but I would say some of them. And actually, you also have a third audience that's basically the regional office that I believe that is some of them is here as well. Uh, that is basically like, okay, okay, I, I just hope that you surprise me uh, with this other model that is going to help like my job, but it's going to make sense somehow with something uh, because also every year is change. So basically, I'm just going to come back to the audience. Um, when you think about like this different perspective about the model in general, for example, the here we go again, um, why actually like people, some people, they just like, they don't believe in the model anymore, or they just like gave up that like, okay, it's just another tool, it's just another thing that's not going to work and everything. So just to give you some perspective why like some people, they don't believe in it anymore, all these kind of things, is actually when you think about the context of the model, and if I read, like try to look for it or try to understand a bit like where all the model actually like how it works in the last years. But basically all the model when you think about in 1516, for example, we already had all the model we actually had since a bit before, but in the end, um, it was more based on ranking so like uh, it was basically like on the amount of exchange that we did and then like a lot of entities, the list of entities and that's it. So it was not something very strong, but it was something that it was there. But then when you go for, for example, 16, 17, we actually didn't have all the model. It was just a research. So like something like things are not really clear about like what to expect about all the model and all these things. And then when we actually went to 17, 18, it was actually the year that we start to focus on product development, not really growth, because before we have like the whole ranking and stuff in terms of volume of exchange. Uh, so basically in that year, we didn't have groups, we didn't have tiers, we didn't have ranking. Uh, and it's actually the year that we start to implement the health and uh, product index. So for example, the HDI and HDI and PDI. 
And then after that year, we also have uh, the year of 1819 that it was more revamping the model. So basically, we still have the same uh, model as 1718. We are tracking, we are updating the data uh, of the framework, but it was not really like we had a, a different research to see, okay, how we can really improve the model for the organization. So, and then it was only 1918, uh, 1920 that it was like when you launched the model game, it was almost one year ago. Uh, it was on the 1st of December, if I'm not wrong, uh, on last year, when we start to have the new model and then we include growth again. And then also, for example, if you remember the framework was much better vis uh, to visualize. Uh, also, we added market reach in HDI. So basically also analyzing signups, the conversion rates and everything there. And of course, like we try to set better metrics to kind of like guide the organization, like set this uh, direction in the organization based on that. So it was basically like how the old model, for example, look like in the last five years. And as you can see, old model was really never stable. So that's why actually you have a lot of people that like they don't really follow it or they don't really believe in it because we never have a clear path. And every time like things change and every time like, uh, I don't know, uh, the model is not going to be so like frequently updated or people, they are not really use it. So and that's why we have this type of audience, but we also have like the type of audience that's actually really excited. And when we ask why, it's because they really like uh, believe in the importance of all the model, for example. So when we think about the importance of, of the model, I just want to explain to you like what does old model really matter in the end? Like why we still have like really a model like trying every year and here we are again, try to do something else again. Uh, it's just because when you think about the old model, the model is basically like a, a tool that we, when we want to understand the current state, like where we are as an organization, like basically all the model can provide us to that. So, and also when we want, for example, to, okay, now I understand where we are, but now I want to understand where I want to go. So basically the old model can also like set this kind of direction, provide this kind of direction where you should go as an organization. Because when you think about, uh, ISAC is organization itself. Uh, we don't have anything to bound us like financially or legal, legally speaking, for example. So basically, all the model allows us to speak the same language of what do we want to achieve together. So basically, all the model set uh, parameters, set like a direction, like how the organization together can go in the same in the same direction and things like that. So basically, that's why we actually have the old model. And also that's why we are like one more time here, like launching and like trying to revamp and make, and make it make some more sense uh, for the organization in this period of time. And um, when we also talk about, for example, okay, I understand why the old model uh, matter in general, like why, we, why the old model exists. We also like, for example, why actually the old model matter to the entities? Because we yeah, are like, it's a model, everything like is very cool for the organization, but for my entity, for example, why is really matter? <laughs> and I mean, there are a lot of points actually that is Internet really connection is unstable. Sorry, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, yes. Perfect. It's just because I think there is someone with the mic open. But okay, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, if something is wrong, you can just drop the message in the chat. But yeah, so basically like in terms of like why the other model matter to the entity, uh, it actually can be a lot of points, but I'm gonna actually explain like the main ones. And it's basically, oh, okay. Uh, and it's basically, the first one is basically provide direction. So basically like from the data, from like uh, all the metrics and all the model, for example, we can really like understand, okay, which direction my entity is going and which direction, for example, I can go uh, in this way. And also in terms of priorities. So for example, you can also set priorities based on the state of your entities, because in the end, when you think about ISAC like in general, like we have a lot of things that we could focus on. We have a lot of departments, we have a lot of areas, we have a lot of strategy and all these things. And I mean, when you think in an MC term, you know, one year term, uh, it can be very difficult to do all the things that you'd like to do. So for example, what should be my main battles? What should be my main priorities? So basically through the model, you could also do that. And 
when the, when I was talking, for example, about the co context of the OD model, like all these years and everything, um, the last OD model that when it was launched, it was launched the last year in December, as I mentioned, and it was a whole hard work that we did to like, okay, let's see what which metrics make sense, how we can make uh, how it can make better, I don't know, like. Uh, it makes more sense for the network and everything. And actually, after four months, uh, we have basically a pandemic, and then like the model was not really used anymore because we didn't know what to do with that. Uh, and then we actually realized that with all of this that it was not about to have a, a tool to like uh, set direction, to set priorities or anything. Because with the whole situation that happened, like with the whole crisis and with the whole pandemic, we actually realized that actually all the model is not, for example, a spreadsheet that you're gonna put how the entities uh, and the, the goals and like predict everything that they should do for the year. We realized that actually all the model should not be an expansion model. It's not like a thing that is gonna give you all the answers of the world. It's not something that you should micromanage what people should do or what your organization should do in the end. Uh, it's not a membership criteria, it's not a rank two, it's not a two to close entity, and it's not an MC plan for the year. So basically like with the pandemic and like also analyzing the model, we realized that actually all the model is, was our scenes in a very different perspective. And in the end, it was not about to have uh, the, to have a tool, but it was actually about to have the right tool for that. So basically that's why we came today uh, with a new model uh, uh, with like a totally different perspective. And I mean, I really hope that all of you are super excited for that um, because in the end, here we are. Now I'm gonna talk a bit more about exactly what is the global model, where this came from, where we are going and everything. So I was just giving you a bit of context in general, uh, but basically, Talking specifically about the global model in 2021, uh, the first thing that you need to understand is where it came from. So it, uh, it was not something that I created yesterday. Uh, it was basically something that it, I would say that since I think since March, we are just trying to figure out what to do with the model. Uh, and then in July, I think it was yeah July, August, it was exactly when you start really work with that because basically the first process that we did um in the we had all the summit in july with the OD network so we have a working space with the OD responsible during all the summit so just to already get some inputs like have get some insights where they should go and everything and then after that we have the closure of the other or the model that we had with 1920. so basically the whole process of documentation and also network communication because it was when we shut down the OD dashboard it was when we stopped to work with the, with the OD model because even though we are not updating since march it was still available so people they're still using it like to check data or anything else uh so basically we decided to shut down everything so we could fo focus completely like in the new model and then after this process, we collect input, insights, and feedbacks from AI, regional office, OD responsible to service. And then after that, we have the whole consolidation uh, of the inputs and the insights uh, that they provide. And then it was when we started the hard work that it was basically the definition of like what is all the model, what will be the old model foundations, uh, what are going to be the elements, what are going to be the metrics and everything. So it took a long way to decide everything, what would make more sense. And then we finally have the data projection and validation. And then basically, they did the dashboard creation. So basically, after many feedback and inputs later, we have finally the OD model 2021. So basically it took around like three to four months uh, until we actually finalize everything and we have everything clear. Uh, and then basically it's just to explain to you what are the main foundations of the OD model, just to understand which direction we are going with this OD model. Basically the OD model first, uh, we are focused on entity improvement over competition. So we are not, on a, we are not like, want to create any kind of like competition between entities. Uh, the other model should be about the entity, it should be to analyze the state of the entity and that's it. Uh, and then also to provide analytical context and clear output to the entities. So they should understand like where this data came from, like where they should go and everything. And then also focus on improving subsystems of the organization. Uh, and then also to find a balance between short and long-term actions and results. And of course, as you could see, based on the whole history of um, the whole model, 
we also want to build our model to, to last because what happened, like, as you could see, like every year there is this need of change the model. And I mean, it's not that we are not gonna change the model anymore, uh, but how about we actually focus and change some metrics, but the model that we use is gonna be the same. The, um, and the definition of the model, the elements and the direction that you want to go is going to be the same. Just need to like adapt the metrics for the uh, period that we are facing or something like that. So it doesn't need to have this need of every time we need to revamp and like change everything that we have uh, in the old model. So basically the idea is that we have all the model that's going to uh, last and it's basically like the main foundations that we had for the old model. And then also one thing that you should have in mind, we actually requ uh, request a lot of inputs also related to the elements that you should have. And then basically the elements that you're gonna have to guide your model is gonna be basically the ASX subsystems. Uh, one of the other option was also the ASX 2025, uh, that is basically the vision. But basically one thing that when you're analyzing also based on the inputs, people said that like it was actually very connected the subsystem in the ASX 2025, because in the end, actually the ASX 2025 is also based on the subsystem. So I was like, okay, I think it's better that we focus in the subsystem in it itself because we don't really need to change even though the, if the visual change in five years. Uh, because also when you think about the subsystems of the organization, that is that the subsystem they actually set the framework to design decisions. And I really believe that is in spirit of time, like it's very important to look at a, a specific part of the organization and also focus like in, in, in some specific areas, for example. So based on that, uh, the other model is also like focus on, on the Isaac subsystems. And then basically the elements that are going to be focused completely is not exactly the name of the Isaac subsystem because we would like to shape a bit more. Um, but basically the element is like programs development we want to analyze our programs uh in the management of our programs uh human resource uh there's basically char finance and sustainability and business development so it's going to be the four points uh of the subsystem that you're going to be analyzing in the OD model and then based on that just to make sure that it's very clear as well uh we are not changing the the index that we used to have that it was basically HDI and PDI. So basically health development index is going to still be there. And also the program development index is also going to be there. Uh, PDI was up before called product development index. And now we are going to change again for program development index just to better fit the name for the way that we are going with the organization. But basically it's the same concept. Nothing's going to change related to that. And just to talk about the HDI itself, that's basically the health development index. We are going to be analyzing inside the health development index, human resource, finance and sustainability, and business development. And this model actually now, I don't know if you remember about the model before, but we used to have better, first, more, and sustainability uh, in the HDI and in the PDI. And in the HDI, it was only like TM, finance, and market reach, for example. We didn't have exactly uh, any kind of uh, parameter. Uh, the guide in the HDI itself, but now we are implementing two parameters to guide like these uh, metrics that is basically process and performance. So basically process is kind of like these kind of steps that you need to do to reach your goal and basically performance is basically your goal, for example, in HDI, I would say. So when you look like just translating what I'm saying, for example, um, in HR, we are going to have that is basically human resource we are gonna have process and performance. So basically process, we are gonna analyze the retention rate of the entity and the performance, we are gonna analyze the ideal structure that the entity should have. So basically each one of them is gonna be like 50, 50% uh, in terms of weight for the calculation. And HR inside uh, health development is that index is gonna be, uh, it's gonna have the weight of 30% uh, in this sense. So it's basically the first, um, element that you analyze in the OD model. And then the second one is basically finance. Uh, finance in terms of process, we are going to be analyzing the entity sustainability. That is also going to be 50%. And in terms of performance, we are going to be analyzing the months of cash reserves. That is also 50% in terms of weight. And then the main difference here is that only finance actually have like 30% um, of weight in the HDI when you calculate everything. Um, 
and like HI is basically 30%, but it's just like a small like um, metric, that a small percentage in terms of weight. And then the 31, that's basically the 30 element and the last one for the HDI is basically business development that also has 30%, uh, 35% in terms of weight. And basically uh, BD has actually three uh, metrics that we are analyzing in terms of process is only partner retention. That's around 25% in terms of weight. And in terms of performance, we are analyzing the numbers of new contracts that they are getting uh, in BD and also the amount of revenue recognized in um, any BD portfolio that they are selling. That is basically 50% of the weight. And then when you go actually to the PD, let me just, yeah. When you go actually for the PDI, uh, we actually have the same con the same idea of program development index, as I said. But for example, now is not anymore uh, better, first and more. So basically now is basically delivery, marketing and sustainability. It's basically the three points that you are analyzing the program development index. So we want to see the program delivery, you want to see the program marketing, and you want to see the program sustainability uh, when you analyze that. And basically the elements that you're analyzing is basically program development. Uh, That's basically GV, GT, GTA, and GTE. Uh, membership, product is, uh, membership program is also gonna be here uh, after we launch. So basically later on, we are also gonna find a way to, to include it here. But basically when you have the membership program launch and all the metrics and everything like clear, uh, it should also be here in the PDI. So there is also this main difference that, for example, HR, we are also, we are trying to focus more in the structure itself and program, uh, the membership program is going to like getting another perspective, more like, okay, in terms of delivery, attraction, and like the sustainability of the program. So it's also going to be here just to uh, make sure that we have it in mind, but it's not here now because we don't have, it's still like finalized. It. It's going to be launched like in some months, uh, but yeah. And then basically, when you think about program development, I didn't put per products because the metrics are really the same, uh, but if there is a small difference between OGX and ISEX. So when you go for OGX, basically we have these three, as I said, delivery, marketing, and sustainability. And basically delivery is gonna be completely focused on goal achievements in approvals and realization uh, with 30% weight like of the program delivery um, point. And then when you go for marketing, we actually have the conversion rate of signups and applicants that is going to have a weight of 20%. And when you go for program for sustainability, it's basically the program sustainability level uh, that is going to be basically 50% of the weight. So it's basically how it's going to look like in terms of OGX. And then the main difference related to ISEX is actually that the metrics are the same for deliveries. It still uh, go, uh, goes, goes as achievement. Uh, also sustainability is also the program sustainability level. But for marketing, we don't have any marketing metrics. Like today, we cannot really have accurate data that we could analyze that. So basically, it's going to be added in future. But for now, like the only metrics that you're going to be analyzing for ISEX is basically the delivery and sustainability that each one of them is going to have 50% weight. Uh, so just to have it in mind that to not expect any kind of like uh, metric or data related to ISEX um, there. Uh, so basically, uh, so basically we have, as I said, the HDI and PDI. And in terms of weight, uh, PDI, this uh, HDI this time, we are going to have uh, much more weight because before in the last of the model, we have 50-50% when you're going to go to analyze the OD index, like the final index. So basically, HDI is going to have 70% of weight. Uh, while uh, PDI is going to basically have 30% of weight because of course we want to focus more like in the health and like the sustainability of the organization and also like for a lot of reasons there are a lot of like uh, entities and also the organization itself cannot be the focus in terms of program like delivery and everything so it should not be the main focus in this period of time so that's why that like for at least for the next semester uh, the main focus is going to be like more focused in terms of health than really like the program itself uh, the program development itself. So that's one of the points that you should have in mind when you're going to check in the old model. And one important thing is that this it was how the old model used to look like uh, when you project the data 
1920. It was basically the last of the date that we had in March. Uh, so you can see here, we have a lot of entities in the bottom uh, that the data was not really like, uh, I don't know, making sense for the, some entities, for example. So we have a lot of entities here in the, in, in the beginning and then also a lot of entities in the bottom. And then basically now is how we have the projected the day or the model 2021. So you can see that like the entities, they are more together, I would say. And uh, we don't have like this amount of entities in the bottom. Actually, some of the entities that are in the bottom, most of them actually, is because we didn't have like data. So for example, Saga or service that it was a red like launched in the network, it was not really feel it. So it's also affect a bit the projection of data when you are doing for the old model. So most of the entities actually that they are in the bottom is not because like they are not really, the data is not really make sense for them. It's just because we don't have the data to project. So if, if by any chance your entity is here, you can just approach me. I would be really glad to receive this data to put in there. Uh, but just to have like some, uh, some things in mind that related with the main difference from one model to the other. And that basically the OD model 2021, as you could see, we are more, more focused in the global vast achievement, not really growth. So like there is not any kind of metrics that we are like, okay, like the top entity, like we reached like this amount of metrics. So like who's gonna be good is gonna be like the ones who's gonna co be close to that. Everything is based on your plan, like what you submit in terms of plan achievement, uh, for example, for the program. So like there is like, you're basically competing with yourself. Uh, so basically we don't really, we, do, we don't really want to push like this culture of competition or growth or any kind of things in this period of time. So it's gonna be completely focused like what you plan and what you are, we are reaching this period of time. And also, as you could see, market it is not anymore as a uh, element, for example, in HDI. Marketing is actually part of a process in program development because in the end, marketing is, was inside the customer flow, uh, so is inside of the customer flow. So we'd like to make it also very clear for the uh, for the programs as well to not be something to completely apart because it's like it's really related to the exchange and what we are doing. Uh, and also, as you could see, we also have the introduction of business development. We didn't have any kind of metric related to BDLST uh, in, the, in any kind of holding model that we had. So we also would like to give more importance and more focus to this department in this area in the organization. And as you could see between the both graphs, so for example, wait, yeah. So for example, here and here, uh, for example, PDI, was not really high like now in the OD model 2021. We don't have like any PDI that is higher than 0 0.5. Uh, when before we have like even like a more seven, uh, for example. Uh, also, a few entities in the bottom, it, as I said, is because of lack of data, because these are the model that we have in 1920. Consider that it was really focused like in competition, growth, and this kind of things. Uh, we have a lot of entities. In because also the HDI that we had before, it was more based on standards. So for example, team process, uh, finance standards and everything. So it, it didn't give a lot of difference as well, like in terms of projection of data in terms of HDI. So it was basically the main uh, change. Uh, just before I go, let me just see if there is anything on the chat that I should read before, uh, before I move. <laughs> okay, there is only, which ones are? PDI and HDI. Ah, okay. The in the graph, the PDI is basically the this one, like the Y X, I would say. And then the HDI is basically the horizontal one. So PDI is basically the vertical, and then like the HDI is basically the horizontal. Uh here. I don't know if it was exactly a question, but I hope it's clear. Okay. Okay, perfect. So now just to move to the, the other part, um, actually the OD dashboard is back. Uh, I mean, 
I don't know if you know, but actually we shut it down like in August and everything. I had 1000 of people request me access every day, uh, but now it's officially back. So you can also access it, so I, it already. So basically it's the same link that we used to have before. Uh, it's very similar also in terms of visualization because also a lot of people gave very good inputs in terms of how the framework used to look like. We just try to improve a bit and revamp a bit. But basically in the dashboard, you can see um, I'm gonna show you some things, but basically you can see like uh, everything that I'm talking here about the model, you can also find in there. Uh, you also, I'm gonna also put, for example, the Audi model 2021 booklet that's gonna be the same flow that I'm present here to you without the memes and the jokes and everything, but you can find out the, this information there as well. But for example, now in the dashboard, you're gonna find the global model metrics. So for example, everything that I was talking here uh, in terms of program delivery, marketing, human resource, blah, blah, blah. You can find everything there, like the metric, how much it weights, uh, the formula that it was used to analyze the score of that uh, specific metric, uh, the time frame that you're analyzing these data, also from where we are getting this data, it's from expert, if it's from GFB, BG survey, HIS. So everything is there. And also when the, all the model data is gonna be updated. So like now is the update that we analyze is basically from August to October, 2020. And then the next one is gonna be on the 5th of December. That's basically to project the date of August to November, 2020. So we always gonna have like this kind of data that is one month before, uh, besides GFB service, because it's always two months before, because uh, for example, now in November, I'm gonna get the data from October, for example. So just have this kind of things in mind as well. But everything's also explained there uh, in one of the tabs. And then you can also see the data projected here, like with all the metrics, all the entities. You can also see the data per region and everything. So it's very similar how we used to look before. Um, and yeah, and then you can just like play a bit like, okay, what is your entity? If it's just like close to the region, things like that. Uh, we can have this perspective. And then also we have the audit process as well is gonna be inside this uh, dashboard. So before, like in the last months, we are using a different spreadsheet, a different framework for the process uh, report, but now it's gonna be everything in the same place. So basically you can also find the audit process of 2021, like all the data and everything. And also you can find the graph. So like I just present this graph to you and also uh, you can find the graphs per region so like you only want to see the entities in europe only ap only in america so in mia so you can just find it uh, and then there is a very cool part that we also had it before but now it's better organized i would say like we have like a better visualization as well but we also have the entity organization development dashboard so basically in this dashboard, you can just go there, put your, uh, the name of your entity, and then you're gonna find, uh, okay, who is the responsible for the OD there? Uh, what is the region? What is the amount of, uh, what is the score of HDI and PDI? Uh, also in terms of OD index, like um, what is the average, where I'm standing? Also in terms of the process and then global versus achievement of approval and realization. If in this case it's zero is probably because it was not updated or something like that. Um, and then also you can have a perspective of like entity region and global overview. So you can see, for example, that the entity is good or is, uh, is a bit like behind the global or the regional data and this kind of things. And also you can see kind of like of a projection of the data. So for example, uh, how the areas of the elements that you're analyzing. So IGV, OGV, GT, OG, IGTA, OGTA and everything. You can see like the whole projection, like where do I stand exactly uh, with the data of the OD model. And also another cool part is that we can also see the analysis of the OD process, also per entity region and global, how you're standing as like in terms of the process. Also the data projection, like because we have design, achieve, network, you see management and knowledge. So you can also see what, what you are really good, what you need to improve. And also there is some like general data uh, that for example, we can also find the numbers of members that we have in your entity. Also the months of reserves uh, that we have. Uh, also the revenues recognized uh, in that period of time. And also the 
percentage of partners retention. And there is like two new data that we include there. That's actually external data. Uh, it's just to give you some insights so or if you want to use for anything or like whatever. But basically there is a very good data that I could find that is about the numbers of youth that we have in the country. So basically, I mean, the data it was got from the World Bank. So it was from the last year because I mean, this year is still, is still not over, but basically, um, there is there you can find the numbers of youth that they have like in 2019 and also the youth that they reach actually in 2019 so basically like in terms of realizations so how many realize did you do like over the number of youth that you have in the country so you can also see like they are I would say like a projection of like how much uh how much you are reach in terms of youth uh, in your in your organization uh, in that specific year. So, for example, here you can see like uh, basically 0.10 percent. So, it's also some things just to give you some insights uh, in terms of impact and how you are reaching the the youth like your target in your country. Um, and then also, for example, in the same in the same tab. You can also analyze based on the region itself, not really exactly like only the entities, but you can also put the name of the region and you can also have the overall perspective, like uh, in terms of data. So if you want to see, I don't know how many numbers of members I have in AP, we actually have 10,488 members. It's actually the, the uh, region that has more members, honestly. Uh, so you can also like play a bit with data if you want to think about like some specific points. And then basically that's it related with the dashboard. What else actually you can expect from the old model? Uh, that's basically, as I said, the next date, next data update is gonna be on the 50th of December. Uh, so basically next week, uh, that's gonna be from the time frame of August to November. Uh, also another very important point, uh, the data is from the previous month. Uh, so as I said, only GFB actually is two, two months before, but all the data, for example, we are gonna, uh, updated the date of December in December, so it's going to be until November, and then the GF date is actually from October. So it's just like to think like to be in the same time frame, and then actually you're going to have another update for the model. Uh, it's not that we're not covering ramp or anything because the model is going to be the same. But actually in IC twenty twenty one we need to we need to add uh, by there. The ISEX marketing, as I said, the, the marketing metrics, because today we don't have any kind of data to analyze, but then we, we are building some ways to collect this data uh, for the next semester. So we we'll have something to launch, uh, to add, to be launched in IC. Also the membership programs, as I said, like it's not still launched and it doesn't, didn't make sense to wait until there. Uh, so basically, um, after it's going to be launched and then we have the whole analysis and everything by IC 2021, if everything is good, we are also going to include the membership program in the other model as well. So just to have it in mind, the model is going to be the same. You're not going to change like elements or anything. It's just like some specific metrics that we need to add there because now we are not really clear. And also what else, um, basically the other model should also support your MCV planning. So like it's also a tool that you could like explore and understand better the data and see where you should go. And just also connect to that before we actually open for questions. Um, what is your role as OD responsible? For example, you can be MCP, you can be MCV, POD, TM, operation, whatever. But how, what is your role as OD responsible when you talk about the other model itself? As I said, uh, you, sh you should use for your replanning uh, as support. So basically identify the main bottlenecks and highlights and like, I don't know what the entity is good, what is the main battles, what you should focus on. So basically like try to identify first what is the, your main bottlenecks. And then after that, define priorities to the next semester. So based on that, okay, I understood that, I don't know, like my HR is not that good. And I think like should be something that it should make a lot of difference for the, for the organization, like for my entity. So I believe that I would like to define like that finance and maybe, I don't know, GTA is gonna be my main priorities for the next semester. Uh, and then based on that, okay, what kind of strategy and focus, I don't know, project or anything I should have like related to that. So really use like the, the OD model, like doing the every planning, very mindful because can give you a lot of insights and a lot of data. Um, you, don't, you are not obliged to, but it's gonna be good for you as well if you use that. And 
also in general just to understand how we produce better yield model because I, sometimes i just feel that people just uh, i want to check a data i'm gonna fill application i want to i don't know like know a specific data related to that and i cannot find anywhere else people use the old model for that so actually like the model could be much better used uh and first you should adapt to your reality so for example if you want to have like the to change all the model to be better uh realistic or something like that and you want to use the global model now to be used there uh really try to adapt it don't copy and paste see if the metrics make sense see if it's like the kind of direction that you're going is making sense for you as well just not copy and paste and then they, they don't have the data or the network doesn't understand it or it's not really your focus or things like that also use it to do remotely and quickly review it's very important honestly because you can always review the data you can also make everyone in the team aware of that like where you're standing as an organization and maybe like where how you should set direction for that Analyze the date of the entity monthly, not only like readily, like whenever you remember, and also follow up the strategy and focus based on the development of your entity in the model. So, for example, you use now for the replanning because based on HI, and then you can see like through the old model every month that HI actually is getting better. And then, like, um, okay, so it means that my strategy is, is working, or maybe like my strategy is not working, so maybe we need to adapt, maybe we need to adjust. So, I always like have these points in mind that you could always use for that. And and then basically, like is that the main points that I have? Uh, I'm gonna check the chat. I don't know because I saw that there was some message. But do you have any questions? Do you have any specific thing that maybe is not clear, or I don't know, it was not. Uh, I didn't talk about that. You can also open your mic if you would like to. So if entities want to update the data, just talk to me directly. So I can also see, for example, because we have like different surveys that we are getting this data. Uh, but for example, if there is a specific point, for example, a specific data that you couldn't submit or you just lose the survey or something like that, just talk with me directly so I can just approach you and I can just like solve it. It's, it's going to be completely fine. Uh, and you can also send me an email if you want, or you can just like approach me uh, on WhatsApp. I mean, email is better, it's better organized, but also WhatsApp is okay. Uh, when will the commission be delivered launch for the new world model? So basically, like in some regions, they are also there, but basically I'm gonna also have a space with them soon to just make sure that everyone's in the same page. Because I know that like for some people they couldn't really be in the in this space because basically like it's not for OD uh, the RPMs the, the OP summit, but it's gonna be I think like by next week they should have like some kind of update related to that because some region actually they included the OD responsible some others like they couldn't so it's a bit different for region to region actually, but everyone's gonna be onboarded like a maximum December, so they're gonna have like the same model the same explanation and everything so it's going to be fine <laughs> but actually if you already want to share with it, it's actually fine as well okay it's not really a secret because in the end i'm sharing with other region uh until friday everyone's going to be already onboarded so you don't just don't need to keep for yourself you can also share with them questions there um, is anything else know, right? so this od model serve as a short-term survival focus can i interrupt in that way sorry can you repeat again so this od model draft or you know the, the design serve as a short-term recovery right is it, mm, or it will not be really. a long-term uh direction okay so in terms of like the model itself like is them in a long-term direction because in the end we are focused for example with the subsystem so you cannot expect that you are going to change uh like that you are not going to focus anymore in hr finance program development this kind of thing so it's more like in a long-term direction you really want to change the way that you are uh how you say that you are seeing like these areas of the organization so we really want to focus on the subsystem in the long term in terms of metrics uh yes it's more a short medium term metrics because for example there are other metrics that you could play with but in this period of time it doesn't really make sense so we are still with a lot of uncertainty where the organization is going uh in this sense so like for example we decide to put this question this specific metrics more related to that it's not really a recovery i would say because in the end we don't have any kind of specific metrics for recovery itself we just have like the
this change of, of uh, it can be, for example, that we actually decrease the amount of weight that we have for HDI and be more balanced with PDI, depending on the organization is going. So actually the old model, we want to make it yes to last, but not something that is not really flexible because in the end, uh, the organization as we know, change all the time. So we also should have metrics that is more flexible in this way. I don't know if I answer your question. Yeah, okay, I understand. Because I have a short follow-up on that because if that serves as a long-term direction, right? I think for the sustainability part, probably we shouldn't just only focus on cash, but also uh, for the entity financial situation in accounting basis as a whole, because mm -hmm. cash should serve as a purpose uh, or a tools in business, but not as an end goal for us to crave for it. Because if we only set MOCR into it, then it will drive the entity or the network to only go for the strategies that get you know, instant cash then it will limit on how the entity are going to design their strategies and also look into the picture as a whole. Yeah, I think just want to uh, suggest or yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. Uh, I think like for in terms of this point, it totally makes sense. For example, before we also like analyze it inside the metrics in terms of finance, but from this period of time, that's why we decided to focus more on the sustainability more related to like reserves and like entity sustainability itself. But it's not really means that like we are gonna stay like this forever. As I said, like the metrics can also be very flexible depends on the period of time. But it's a good input, I'm gonna take it forward. And I hope it's also clear as well, like the kind of direction that you'd like to have related to that. I think someone else has another question. Yeah, me. Okay, thank you, Leah. Thank you so much for a detailed explanation for that. But I'm just like, you know, curious and wondering about, uh, in ISAC, we're talking a lot about leadership experience that we deliver. And then in the previous term, we always like, you know, like, we able to measure that by providing exchange, right? So we are not only gaining revenue from that, but also delivering leadership experience. And then it's so reflecting on the model that we have as an organization. So I was wondering uh, right now, a lot of like entities focusing on to innovate their EWA product. Um, so I don't know where the EWA product should go to HDA or PDI in, the, in this case, because people will tend to generate money from whatever kind of activities that they have instead uh, of providing, you know, like a leadership experience to other people. So this is, I think, like one of the missing point that I got during the presentation, because uh, even if we're trying to generate revenue, uh, we should focus on also, you know, like um, emphasize that we deliver, you know, leadership experience, because even if we have like members as in our measurement, I, I don't think, because we don't have any expert M or productivity anymore. So I don't think the more members that we have, the, the good state that we have um, to delivering leadership experience itself. So I don't think so by putting membership and then also product and then it decreasing a lot as a measurement that we deliver more leadership experience to year to come, especially in this crisis. Yeah. Okay, could you just clarify a specific point? I think I got it. Just <laughs> want to make sure that I got it. <laughs> Um, I was just like asking right now, like a lot of entities like trying to focus on, you know, like innovating an EWA product. So I don't think there is a measurement or metrics to really measure that in this Audi model, especially in this time of crisis, uh, we aim to always deliver leadership experience, right? By whatever products or program that, that we created. Um, and then I don't think so that putting membership is one of that and then also act we, we decrease uh, a percentage of actions a lot also as well. So, uh, so we put EWA to the HDA or is like generating revenue from EWA is one of the measurement because I don't think, I don't see a uh, leadership measurement there. Okay, Man, mm -hmm. now I got it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so for example, in terms of like the EWA, for example, it was in the first draft of the model for now, it was one of the metrics that will be included in the HDI. So the numbers of e, uh, EWA that you are delivering and everything. But then it was like the main challenge that we had, it was like to really validate this data. So that's why like we decided to put in a standby for now. But for example, inside the revenues recognized, uh, EWA is also there. Uh, that is also one of the things that we ask like in the GFB and 
and the BD survey. So we are also like include this point there to analyze. But in terms of the realization of like the leadership experience, so like the amount of PWA that you are doing, uh, is it still not really there? Because we actually need to figure out how you want to work with that in the next semester and how we can also validate this, this data. And sorry, I really didn't mention about that, but it's actually, it was a thing. I think a couple of people actually gave this input for the survey that you should not analyze only the membership program and only the programs that we have related to exchange, but also all the kind of initiatives. Uh, we really try to put it in the model, but based on the data that we have right now, it didn't really make sense. So it's going to put the entity, some entities really down in this in this way, but it's going to take forward for sure. Uh, thank you for that, just to highlight this point. Anyone else has any other questions? Uh, yeah, actually, I still have one, uh, but I, I, I'm really not so sure about, you know, the answer from that question, okay? Yeah, so I think making go with actual, I think definitely it makes sense for PDI, yeah. But then my, I'm not so sure because OD models serve as a purpose to understand entity reality. And then we design growth strategies for, for each of them, right? And if we put go with actual, uh, let's say to measure it monthly, then maybe there is a fluctuation that one entity suddenly very performing in November but then uh, it no longer performing in December, right? And it suddenly bounced back in January. So I'm not so sure with that fluctuation, it you know, could be considered as normal uh, or that would be the things that we, we need to look into it, yeah. Because it will be exactly. leading to the strategies alignment, right? If let's say we have uh, too much fluctuation. This actually makes sense. I don't think I can answer this question, but I think it's something that we can actually analyze uh, to see, because I think it's like, it actually makes a lot of sense in terms of the fluctuation that we have related to the reality of the entity and stuff. But I think, for example, based on the previous model, we didn't have like exactly a data to really see this trend or really analyze exactly this point. But I'm actually gonna take it as input to see like how we can actually work with that as well related to the model, because I think it's very important. Perfect. Anyone else has any other questions? We still have 12 minutes actually. So we can have a break or I can still keep answering questions. Clear. Perfect. So if you have any, any questions, or oh, I don't know, if when you explore the dashboard, you find something that maybe like you'd like to ask, or you have a shoe, you can just approach me. I'd be really glad to answer you all your questions and like supporting whatever you need. And that's basically this for my side. Uh, here's the link of the dashboard. It's the same link as before, so you can just send to the OD model to the your OD response when say that they can find the OD model here. And I hope it was a very useful space for you. I'm really happy that actually like you have like some very important points uh, that actually is the first time that I'm launching the other model. So I still have three regions to go. So I can also take all the inputs that he gave to the other regions. Uh, so thank you so much. I hope you have amazing afternoon, evening, day, whatever, and a, uh, a good summit as well. And 